This drone will extend the field of view of America's best aircraft. Let's see how the Air Force and Navy could become more deadly. The U.S. Air Force may be months away from deciding whether to produce its first fighter-style, wingman drone. However, California-based unmanned aerial vehicle maker Kratos, which built the Air Force's prototype XQ-58A Valkyrie wingman UAV, is confident the aviation branch will decide to go ahead. Kratos has already begun ordering engines in anticipation of receiving the first series production contract for the XQ-58, Jane's reports. Reporting the company's second quarter 2019 results on an earnings call, July 31, 2019, Kratos president and CEO Eric DeMarco said the company was confident the Valkyrie was on track for initial production and program milestones, according to Jane's. The company has begun ordering engines for Valkyrie production that are expected to meet future customer delivery requirements, DeMarco said. The XQ58A demonstrator is powered by an existing Williams International FJ33 twin spool turbofan engine, Jaynes noted. It is uncertain whether this engine type will be retained for future production. The Air Force's Wingman drone initiative is moving quickly. The Air Force Research Laboratory's Skyborg program is developing artificial intelligence for the broader Wingman drone effort. To develop the hardware, AFRL is experimenting with a mock-up of the XQ-58 subsonic drone. The Air Force wants an early version of the Wingman drone to be combat-ready by 2023. Kratos is betting that the Air Force will use the XQ-58 as the basis for a combat-ready Wingman, bot. The Valkyrie's maiden flight was in March 2019. The 29-foot-long, jet-powered XQ-58 took off for its second test flight over Yuma, Arizona, on June 11, 2019. The Air Force and Kratos plan to conduct five test flights during this phase of the XQ-58's development. The Air Force has also begun testing software that could help future robotic wingmen perform difficult maneuvers in aerial combat. The initial software test took place at Edwards Air Force Base in California on July 25, 2019. The Emerging Technology Combined Test Force from the Air Force's 412th Test Wing installed new flight control software on a small, radio-controlled drone. What we have right now is a small jet-powered aircraft. It's about 12 feet long and it's going about 250 knots, said Jeff Yesen, an engineer with the Emerging Technology Combined Test Force. Our goal is to verify the autonomy safety net. The testing of autonomy in complex environments, or TACE, software is a product of the Applied Physics Lab at Johns Hopkins University. The Air Force's new version of the F-35A stealth fighter jet, as well as a heavily upgraded version of the F-15 that the aviation branch is expected to acquire, could both serve as flight leaders for the service's drone wingman, Will Roper, the Air Force's top weapons buyer, told Defense News reporter Valerie Encina. The Air Force is in talks with Boeing and Lockheed to modify their F-15EX and F-35A Block 4 fighters to accommodate data links and processors from the Skyborg effort, Encina reported. Roper told Encina that pairing a manned fighter with a drone could open the door to a whole different way of doing air combat. For example, take a typical four aircraft formation and replace it with an F-15EX and three Valkyries, Encina explained. We can take risks with some systems to keep other systems safe, Roper said. We can separate the sensor and the shooter. Right now, they're co-located on one platform with one person in it. In the future, we can separate them, put the sensor in front of the shooter, put the manned system behind the unmanned. There's a whole playbook. Boeing's Australian subsidiary in February 2019 unveiled what it calls the Airpower Teaming System, a 38-foot-long jet-powered drone that the company says can carry weapons and sensors and fly 2,000 miles, all at a lower cost than a $100 million manned jet. Boeing developed the new drone in collaboration with the Australian military. After further development, the Royal Australian Air Force could acquire the UAV to quickly and cheaply add firepower to its fleet of about 100 fighter jets and 6 E-7 radar planes. The Boeing Airpower teaming system is designed to work with a variety of existing military aircraft, from fighters to commercial aircraft, said Ashley Irwin, a Boeing spokeswoman. In addition to Australia, China and Japan are also working on wingman drones. 
A mock-up or prototype of China's 30-foot-long dark sword drone first appeared in public in an undated photo circulating online in mid-2018. Japan unveiled its own unmanned combat support aircraft, wingman drone concept in a technology roadmap first published by Aviation Week in late 2016. The F-35 and F-15EX fighters could get drone wingmen in the next few years, the Air Force's top acquisition official told Defense News. The service is exploring ways to pair Lockheed Martin's F-35s and Boeing's new F-15EXs with the XQ-58 Valkyrie drone, a low-cost, towable fighter made by Kratos Defense, or a similar unmanned platform. Towable means the asset is reusable, but cheap enough that the service can afford to lose it in combat. The Air Force is in discussions with Boeing and Lockheed about the prospect, and the Air Force Research Laboratory is working on the technology, Will Roper said May 21st in an exclusive interview. I'm very excited about it, and the F-35 has a tremendous opportunity to do this as part of Block 4, Roper said, referring to the F-35's upcoming upgrade program. We may also have an opportunity to do this as part of the F-15X. Roper told lawmakers this month that the Valkyrie would transition to a prototype program known as Skyborg, in which the drone would be equipped with new sensors and payloads and would be linked to a manned fighter jet. In March, he described Skyborg as an artificial intelligence wingman that would train and learn alongside a pilot, or perhaps be inserted into the cockpit of a manned fighter jet to act as an assistant pilot like R2-D2 in the Star Wars movies. The Air Force has not yet identified any platforms it is considering for Skyborg or for the XQ-58 Valkyrie. The Valkyrie, which made its first test flight at Yuma Proving Ground, Arizona, on March 5, is designed to perform and maneuver like a fighter jet. It can fly at high subsonic speeds, take off without a runway and, according to Kratos, meets or exceeds the Air Force's requirement for a range of 1,500 nautical miles with a 500-pound payload. When mass-produced, Roper estimated the fighters would cost several million dollars, each, not cheap, but less expensive than the F-35A and F-15X, which are estimated to cost about $80 million per jet over the same time frame. The Air Force is also assessing whether other unmanned aerial systems could complement the Skyborg program. A March request for information described a modular fighter that would be autonomous and interoperable, with open systems that could be upgraded with new AI software or new hardware. Desired features include the ability to detect and avoid obstacles and adverse weather, as well as take off and land autonomously. According to the request, an autonomous air system experimental campaign could be conducted in fiscal years 2019 and 2020, with the aircraft expected to be ready by 2023. Roper said combining fighters with drones could open up opportunities for a completely different way of doing air combat. For example, take a typical four-aircraft formation and replace it with an F-15EX and three Valkyries. We can take risks with some systems to keep others safe, Roper said. We can separate the sensor and the gunner. Right now, they're co-located on a single platform with one person on it. In the future, we could separate them, put the sensor in front of the gunner, put the manned system behind the unmanned. There's a whole playbook. For the F-35, the path to incorporating Skyboard would involve writing software, similar to an iPhone app, that could be installed on the jet during its Block 4 modernization phase in the early 2020s. Starting in 2023, F-35s coming off the production line will be equipped with better processors, more memory capacity and a new, advanced display in the cockpit, a series of changes the F-35 program office calls, Technology Refresh 3. Underpinning the upgrades is a transition to a government-owned open mission systems architecture that will allow the services to create and upload custom software. Applications, F-35 Program Chief Vice Admiral Matt Winter told reporters this month. In a statement, Lockheed spokesman Mike Friedman said the F-35 is well-suited, for manned-unmanned teaming applications like Skyborg. Unlike fourth-generation aircraft, the F-35 is a force multiplier capable of sharing its operational picture with ground, sea and air assets on the battlefield, Friedman said. Lockheed Martin has extensive experience in manned-unmanned teaming and is working closely with our customers to develop and field this critical capability.
The timing of integration will be determined by our customers through the capabilities, development and delivery, C2D2, Framework for Advanced Modernization, FOM. In the meantime, Congress must first decide whether to fund the F-15EX program, a likely prospect given that the House budget bill includes $986 million for eight jets. Boeing appears to welcome the potential upgrade. In an emailed statement, Pratt Kumar, the company's vice president for F-15 programs, acknowledged that the company is in talks with the Air Force about a path to incorporate the F-15EX into Skyborg. We are in early discussions with our U.S. Air Force customers on how to incorporate contemporary technologies like this, he said. The F-15X is a well-suited platform for this technology insertion because it has the computing capacity and space to continue to offer new capabilities to the warfighter. The biggest challenges, Roper says, may be technological and cultural, not financial. I don't think there's a funding barrier, he says. It's just different. There's going to be a human factor. So how do you get a simulator to do this? How do you put AI into a system that's attributable? What do you do? What don't you allow it to do? When Roper recently visited the Massachusetts Institute of Technology, the scientists he spoke to acknowledged that their AI research was driven by near-term commercial applications, like expanding internet connectivity to everyday electronics. Future generations of AI, like driverless cars, will have to grapple with questions of trustworthiness and listening, Roper adds. But the AI the Pentagon wants will have to be more advanced from the start if the U.S. military is going to protect itself from adversaries who are trying to exploit the system's capabilities, like pattern recognition, feature recognition and data extraction, by feeding it false information. The current generation of AI is not dealing with a world that understands how AI works and is intentionally trying to mess with its machines. We're going to deal with that, Roper says. We need to understand when machines are at their best and when humans are at their best. We need to train people to have the instinct for AI that they have the instinct for stealth, he said. When does AI give them an advantage, and when doesn't it? In the future, Iceman from Top Gun might be speaking those words to an artificial intelligence version of Maverick, not a flesh-and-blood aviator played by Tom Cruise. At least, that's the situation the Air Force Research Laboratory might be engineering with its Skyborg program. Will Roper, Assistant Secretary of the Air Force for Acquisition, Technology and Logistics, envisions Skyborg as an AI wingman who would train and learn alongside pilots, becoming more skilled, more attuned to the pilot's needs, and more ready to deal with threats that humans might struggle to process. Featured Ebook, Defending the Pacific. Coverage, AFA Warfare Symposium. White Paper, Modernizing Military Policing. Air Warfare, Introducing Skyborg, Your New AI Wingman. By Valerie and Sina, March 15, 2019. A demonstration of the XQ-58A Valkyrie, a long-range, high subsonic unmanned aerial vehicle, completed its maiden flight on March 5, 2019, at Yuma Proving Grounds, Arizona. D.O.D. Washington, you can be my wingman anytime. In the future, Iceman from Top Gun might say those words to an artificial intelligence version of Maverick, not to a flesh-and-blood aviator played by Tom Cruise. At least, that's the situation the Air Force Research Laboratory may be engineering with its Skyborg program. Will Roper, the Air Force's Assistant Secretary for Acquisition, Technology and Logistics, envisions Skyborg as an AI wingman that would train and learn alongside pilots, becoming more skilled, attuned to the pilot's needs, and ready to deal with threats that humans might struggle to process. Related, Boeing unveils, Loyal Wingman, Drone. The concept is designed to serve as a loyal wingman for manned platforms and is being developed in partnership with the Royal Australian Air Force. A prototype is expected to fly in 2020. By Nigel Pittaway. The effort is still in its early stages, with AFRL currently in the process of establishing an AI entity with academics. However, Roper said there is funding attached to the effort, and the service is considering integrating Skyborg with drones, perhaps Boeing's QF-16, Kratos XQ-58 Valkyrie, or BQM target drones, in the future.
I don't want this to be just a laboratory project that lives and dies in a petri dish. I want this to be a program, he told reporters at a conference Wednesday. I want to see a real operational demonstration within a few years. And I would push for it to be sooner than that. Roper compared Skyborg to R2-D2, the Star Wars droid who serves as Luke Skywalker's assistant as he pilots an X-Wing, and Watson, the AI developed by IBM to answer questions better than a Jeopardy champion. If Skyborg were integrated into a low-cost, disposable aircraft like the Valkyrie, a pilot could fly it into airspace dents with enemies and stay out of harm's way. The AI might even be able to respond to threats faster than a human pilot. Or, it could function like Apple's Siri, a voice-activated presence in the cockpit that responds to, or even anticipates, the pilot's commands, Roper said. I expect the first thing we do won't look as sexy as you might imagine in a movie, but it will be a game-changer, he said. What that first demonstration will look like is still up in the air. At some point, Roper said he'd like to see Skyborg put into a simulator to train with and against human pilots. He'd also like to put AI in drones to test how well they can identify objects and whether they're feeding good data to pilots. But Roper stressed that human pilots aren't going away anytime soon, or perhaps ever. It's going to make them more important. We're going to ask them to do more things, that aren't just flying a really fast, deadly aircraft. We're going to ask them to fly that aircraft and then quarterback a team of aircraft with them. I think that's going to make being a pilot a lot more interesting, he said. As Skyborg evolves, the Air Force will have to grapple with a number of questions, Roper said. First, how much responsibility should an AI wingman take on? What missions can it perform? Can it automatically make decisions about whether to fire weapons? Does that change based on how much the system has learned over its lifetime? I want to try hard to address those kinds of issues. Roper said, adding that those questions aren't impossible because Skyborg's performance in testing could help the Pentagon determine how much autonomy it should have. I don't have an AI program right now that we can give to the warfighter to figure out what the dilemmas are, he said. Once we get it, it seems to be moving so fast that our policies are going to have a hard time keeping up. If you can't make policies, you have to have commander intent, so people can make decisions at their level about how to use it. Another issue is what entity within the Air Force would be responsible for managing Skyboard once it's a full-fledged program. Software for an aircraft is typically managed by that platform's program office. But, if, for example, Skyboard were to be installed on the QF-16, it might not make sense for the QF-16 office to own the software if the Air Force wanted to use the data in other ways, Roper said. These are all challenges the Air Force must address or risk falling behind competitors like China, which is also prioritizing investments in artificial intelligence. It's an exciting future. We just need to get over this first hurdle, which is the disparate technologies that are confusing our acquisition system, Roper said. I think once these technologies are in the hands of operators, new opportunities will open up.